Hi, welcome to Revved Up for Sunday, a lectionary podcast from the clergy of St. Mark's Episcopal Church in New Canaan, Connecticut. I'm Justin Crisp. I'm Elizabeth Garnsey. And I'm Peter Walsh. And today, Jesus compares us all to a bunch of animals. Let's hear it. A reading from the Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Well, what do you all make of that? This is happening, this is, this, um, uh, we, sh- we should be clear here at the beginning that this is just one portion of the Good Shepherd discourse, mm-hmm. right, in, right, in the Gospel of John. So Jesus has been comparing himself to a shepherd here for many verses, <laughs> many mm-hmm. for, uh, you know, basically since the beginning of the 10th chapter, and here we are picking up with verse 22. But starting with just this particular excerpt that the lectionary gives us, mm-hmm. what do you all think? I'd is say it's brutal to start with this excerpt. Uh, <laughs> I, I, no. You just say we have to redo the lectionary. Well, I, I'm all, yeah, I didn't know that until we started doing these podcasts <laughs> that I had such an <laughs> issue with the lectionary or with the translations. So uh, set the setting, setting the the scene here a little bit. Just what you said, the, the Good Shepherd discourse. So in year year A, I looked it up this morning here. Year A, we get we get verses one through ten, and this is Jesus mm-hmm. saying, uh, "I'm the gate," right? And he's describing all that. And then year B, we get, "I'm the Good Shepherd. I lay down my life." And now year C, we get this 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 these conclusions of the themes really uh, mm-hmm. that have been coming up before then. Mm-hmm. When you get dropped into this outside of that, uh, it, it's a little, so, uh, hmm, mm-hmm. right. I think. It's, it's really in the context of, of all of what he said. And, 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 and so we, we, we arrive here. We're mm-hmm. at the Feast of the Dedication, which is, uh, you and I were muttering before we started on, this is Hanukkah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hanukkah. You know, maybe you say a word about what Hanukkah is. Uh, this is the time of Hanukkah. They're they're up in the the portico of Solomon. The portico of Solomon doesn't exist anymore. That was that was knocked down. But the portico of Solomon on the Temple Mount, which is forty square acres, the portico of Solomon is the uh, colonnades. The 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 the, the covered with. And then columns hold up around the edge of one end of, uh, or much of the Temple Mount, and it was there mm-hmm. that Jesus taught. It was there actually in the Acts of the Apostles that the early Christians met. This is where people who were in the in the in the uh, Gentile courts could hang out and mm-hmm. mill about and be. And so he's up there, and he gets surrounded. Says mm-hmm. uh, that you know the Jews so unfortunate for us with our ears now to hear, mm-hmm. but the Jewish authorities, you know, it's almost like the the local clergy mm-hmm. surround him and they want to surround him and that surround him is the same surrounding you get when they want to when you're surrounded by wild animals that want to eat you mm-hmm. uh, and we get this contentious uh, thing and you know how long are you gonna uh, keep us in suspense which is also a kind of a rough translation yeah. right I mean I think isn't this like how long are you gonna vex us mm. something like that and and right. I mean Jesus is a vexing guy let's just face it super vexing guy and anytime we flatten that out and say this guy is not vexing right. I think mm. we really we really do everybody a disservice here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that the the term the Jews in this part of John, it, the establishment, I guess, is sort of the way that it works in this gospel. Yeah. Um, and oh, so good. throughout the gospel, they, you know, he's being inquisition and challenged, and they have these confrontations often mm-hmm. throughout, like a drumbeat in this gospel. Yeah. And here's the final of the of the big confrontations. And they ask him directly. It's the only time in the gospel where they ask him directly, mm. if you're the Messiah, tell us plainly. Mm. So 
Um, Which I just have to say is is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> right. It's the right question. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it also echoes, it's sort of the bookend, you know, for, for his public ministry. And right. in the beginning, it was John the Baptist, you know, testifying to Jesus as the Messiah. And then they inquisition John the Baptist in the same way. Yep. And so you have the, the brackets that way, I think. So That's good. It's, it's an interesting device. And I think, for, I think that the placing of this at the Festival of the Dedication, the yeah. verses 1 through 21 uh, have it at a springtime festival. And here it's winter, and I think that also maybe it doesn't make any sense. It's the same crowd; it flows, but um, I think John is bringing us to the winter of Jesus's ministry. Oh, wow, hundred percent, hundred percent. This is this is nice. weather as yeah. this is weather as theology, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the de- you know festival of dedication, Hanukkah. It celebrates the rededication of the temple after the liberation from Antiochus Epiphanes, nice. desolating sacrilege nice. in 67. Nice. Uh, so the Maccabees you heard it, you take heard it. one for the team. Yeah. You know, they're not supposed to be violent in the temple, and mm-hmm. they, they sacrifice themselves to take back the, the altar. And then it's rededicated, and they celebrate this. So... There's no reason for Jesus to be in Jerusalem. I think it's one feast they didn't have to come to Jerusalem for. Hmm. But there he is. And I, so that's why I think it's that's because it's winter. You know, they have to be bringing us to the end of his, his public time. Hmm. So I don't know. That's kind of, I find that stuff really interesting. I just, I love the way John writes. So I, hmm. I always find there's endless bits of fascination just from a literary point of view that, yeah. that, make his point Uh, totally man i i love the point about winter and that's not winter like you know it's time to go skiing or something like that this is like now is the winter of our discontent discontent. uh (laughs) what is that what's that show i don't mean hunger games what's the show where it says it's it's winter on the other side of the wall um, oh, 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 Game of, Thrones. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Coming. This is the winter of winter. Game of Thrones. This is, this is, this is yeah. Oh, that's I mean, really good. Is, we're, all, we're in chapter <laughs> 10 oh my here. Gosh. And, and, and it's going to be the Last Supper here coming very, very soon. Oh, that, very that, soon. Yeah. That's absolutely right. <clears throat> um, I'm, also, um, I'm also drawn to, if you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Gosh, I would love for Jesus to say some things right. plainly. But then again, his answer is, well, I have told you some things plainly, and I think he does say some things plainly, and I just can't hear them, and that's what right. he's saying his audience can't yeah. do here either. I have told you, and you do not believe mm-hmm. the works that I do. He says, that's what, that's what testifies to me, and these works are what the Gospel of John calls signs, right? Mm-hmm. These are, uh, the, Jesus' works in John are not simply healings as such, not simply, um, right. you know, uh, not simply forgiveness of sins as such. These are all of these miracles or these works that Jesus is performing are supposed to testify to him. They're supposed to be signs which carry the meaning of the one who does them inside of them. You know, going back back to yeah. the very beginning where the first sign is the, uh, the, the wedding at Cana. Uh-huh. So these, these works are supposed to show us who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. And he says, I've been doing this the whole time. And in chapter 9, that's when um, Jesus heals the man who was blind, Born blind and yeah. the um oh it says a little bit on in chapter nine that the pharisees um whom we've spoken about before on the podcast and said that like of all of the of all of the jewish uh like the divisions of the jewish community the pharisees are actually the closest to jesus's own ministry and intent mm-hmm. uh and in True. other passages we see the pharisees trying to do jesus a solid trying to warn him about things that are about to come to pass so the pharisees can get a bad rap but mm-hmm. jesus is very close actually to the pharisees theologically and otherwise closer than you might see given the polemics of the day right. in which all four gospels are written uh, mm-hmm. But in any case, here the Pharisees are making a mistake, and they, all that they can see is not the fact that this person who was blind can now see. All they can see is that this man was healed on the Sabbath, and so in contradiction of their interpretation of the laws of the Sabbath. And so they, they, can't, they can't see the miracle Jesus has done. All they can see is the fact that he's transgressed the law. And so I think here he's saying, you know, I have told you and you don't believe. 
Mm -hmm. I, the works I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you don't believe because you do not belong to my sheep. And that's a real puzzle here mm -hmm. because it seems that the, I mean, he goes on to say what my Father has given me is greater than all else and so on and so on. So it's this idea that the Father has given Jesus sheep. They know his voice. Did the Father just not give him these Pharisees from chapter 9? Is that what's going on? And here we begin to like get into mm. the, talk about vexing, mm -hmm. the vexing question of predestination, all of that kind of thing. And I try not to flatten any of that stuff out, just to say I, I, think, that the, I think that the scriptures contain all of this imagery all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. There's the imagery of the fact that like uh, it, it, the sheep are given Jesus by the one he calls Father. And there's the sense that we freely choose to be among the sheep, right? You know, it's it's all of those things at the all those things at the same time. Uh, I don't know if either one of you want to comment on predestination or whether you know God giving Jesus the sheep precedes the sheep knowing <laughs> His voice, uh, or how that might work in our own lives, or if you just prefer to like take a pass and let the Presbyterians across the street, the devotees of uh, John Calvin, you know, uh, comment on that. Um, my brain is simply too small for these <laughs> questions. Uh, I, I, I take a pass on, on that. Um, I find it to be um, a theological rabbit hole that is wildly unhelpful mm. and, and does not, it's not good, yeah. for, not good for the soul in any way. Mm. And I, I think that people who run down that rabbit hole, and, and no offense to our Presbyterian friends, I'm happy to have them take this on, um, uh, find themselves lost in um, a place that doesn't lead to the way of love, uh, mm. which is what Jesus taught. And it, it doesn't, it, it's a theological conundrum that does not bring, uh -huh. um, it does not bring holiness. I'll just say that. I, I, I find the whole conversation mm. to be vexing for mm. sure, mm -hmm. but to, 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 to launch in on it, to be unhelpful. Mm. And that, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm small minded on this. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I, I like I to stay right. in the text with things like this. I think John has a particular place and time and community that's farther out than the synoptic gospels. Mm. And they have mm. more clear lines between themselves and the synagogues and the Jews who have decided to follow Jesus and the Jews who've stayed in the synagogue and the Jews have been thrown out of their synagogues mm. because of Jesus. So I think he's addressing those people who are living with uh, the isolation of being thrown out of their communities or divided in household. Um, you know, there's a lot of pain involved in being a first century Johannine Christian. Mm. And I think that he there he's writing with this more clarified sense of, you know, the, the ultimate questions and answers, you know, and mm. I just feel like the, this kind of confrontation here is probably echoing what they're experiencing in their synagogues. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. was he the Messiah or not? Tell us plainly, because if you, if you say the wrong answer, you're out of here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm. I don't know. That's I think it's helpful. Yeah. And yeah. similarly, I think the father and I are one. It's so easy to jump right into the third, you know, second, third century controversies that of, of one person, one essence, one being when it's, uni you know, in John, the message seems to be we are united in our work. And it's not to say they're not one person, one essence, one, but but here, I just feel like we go too far too fast with some of these scriptures to say, um, oh, see, this is what Jesus was telling us all along that, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, and, and really it's working for that community at that time. And it works for us, too, but we don't have to be bound by their controversies. But um, mm -hmm. it's a helpful way to read it. I, to me, because I also get great sympathy for the early Christians, and then I see yeah. my own life. And, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that's interesting, and I know I'm, I'm yeah. leaping in here. So mm. I think that the question of this, staying in the text, which is a place I'm, I'm more comfortable oftentimes, uh, that the whole, the whole text um, is a reverberation of the Hebrew Scriptures, mm. where uh, the, that the, the good shepherd, right, the shepherd of the sheep, is uh, in 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 the Hebrew scriptures and actually in the whole of the Near East is the king. Mm. So when Jesus says, "I'm the good shepherd," he's saying, "I am the good king." And so and then in the passage that I preached on uh, last Sunday about 
tend my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, that, that whole thing. The word tending of those sheep is the word that they use for the king caring for mm. the flock. So we have Jesus as Messiah King. Mm -hmm. We have, we have uh, 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 sheep as, uh, as the people that belong to the kingdom, so to speak. And and then we you know we get this whole question of the Shema, the Father mm -hmm. and I are one, right? Uh -huh. So the it, this is nice. to my mind this is all echo 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 yeah. of 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 um, uh, a, a Hebrew story, and it takes place uh, on the Temple Mount and during the during Hanukkah where there was great division. I mean the 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 feast of the dedication, I mean the Maccabee, Joseph Maccabee slays um a Hebrew man who comes to make a sacrifice in the altar with a sword. Mm. And so they're killing the, the, the Jewish people are killing the Jewish people and and here we have uh, this is an intra Jewish, an intra Hebrew disagreement mm. taking place on, the, uh, on mm -hmm. the, the celebration of of Hanukkah, the cleansing of all this. So, I, mm -hmm. I mean, I think you get in here, there's super duper echoes of a Hebrew wow. story that has yeah. it's really, interesting. really, really quite far from the question of the Johannine community, mm. that there's another thing being worked out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that's really interesting. That's good. You know, I, I think that um, the thing which I love about the Gospel of John is the way that it's um, it's using the Hebrew and the Greek traditions mm -hmm. in which the Jewish people and the Christian people of his yeah. day, the people of his day, Jew and Gentile, would have been swimming, right? Yeah. So you've got all of these Hebrew echoes here. Uh, you've got references in the prologue to the Gospel yes. of John to mm -hmm. the Logos, right? This Greek philosophical concept, especially beloved of the Stoics and so on. And John's not unique in the fact that he's combining these different currents. Uh, certainly not unique. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of the philosopher Philo uh, in particular. But he is unique in the fact that he finds both of these mm -hmm. worlds coming to an apex in Jesus of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's really really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I'm, I'm taking away from both of your comments is that uh, this is a passage of consolation. It's supposed to be a passage of consolation, uh, a consolation for those in the immediate context of the Gospel of John, right? The Johannine community yeah. who's undergoing uh, persecution uh, in the you know in their um, uh, in their relationship with. Uh, with other Jews at the time. Um, you're talking about how the doctrine of predestination in the modern period, in the Reformation period, and on. So jumping from the first century to the 16th century and on, you know, this is a doctrine which has not been a doctrine of consolation, right? Which is the great irony of the doctrine of consolation because even Calvin, I mean, Calvin gets a bad rabbit. I love Calvin. <laughs> he's not right about everything, okay? He's really not. He's not right about everything, but he's right about some things. And he's, he's right in his intention, I think. Calvin actually intended predestination to be consoling. He didn't. Now, he goes wrong, I think, because he, <laughs> unlike Thomas Aquinas, okay, unlike Thomas Aquinas, he jumps from uh, predestination predestination to salvation, he also posits predestination to reprobation or damnation, okay? And that's a, that's a Calvinist um, innovation. That's a departure from the tradition, I think, of Augustine and Thomas Aquinas and so on. So Calvin doesn't invent mm -hmm. predestination. Actually, the, you know, the early, early theologians of the Western tradition invent, as it were, predestination. The goal of it is to say that you're good. <laughs> the goal of it right. is not actually to say... You belong. Exactly. It's the, the goal of it is to say, you belong. That in the moment when you think, um, in the moment when you realize, oh, wow, I can't do this alone, you're given the truth, it's already been done for you. Uh, and it's because, as in the, in the words of the first letter of John, um, we love because he first loved us. So we are always loving out of our own sense of belovedness. We don't have to earn God's favor. Rather, God just loves us, period. And then like any child who flourishes whenever they're loved unconditionally by a parent, we are then freed non-anxiously to go into the world and to give ourselves away in love. We love because we first loved us. And that's, I think, the purpose of the doctrine of predestination, even though it's gotten, uh, you know, it, it gets twisted around and that kind of thing. Um, I'll just say... 
the early, the first uh, Protestant Archbishop of Canterbury, so one of our founders as Anglicans, Thomas Cramer, did believe in a version of predestination, but he thought it was only predestination to salvation. He doesn't posit any kind of positive predestination to damnation. So there he's like the older tradition instead of the Calvinists, trying again to keep this a word of consolation instead of a, instead of a word of like anxiety, right? Where, oh my gosh, am I in or am I out? The point is not to ask, am I in or are or am I out? The point is to tell you, you belong. You belong because God loves you and God loved you mm. first. God loved you even before you loved God yeah. and so on. I, I will say that the, um, I think the most important line of, the most important sentence in this passage is, my sheep hear my voice. Um, and I was reminded of a passage in the writings of C.S. Lewis um, from Mere Christianity where Lewis says that the chief problem of the Christian life is not a one and done kind of big decision that you have to make one time. It's rather what we face, and here I'm quoting him, face the very moment you wake up each morning. All your wishes and hopes for the day rush at you like wild animals. And the first job each morning consists simply in shoving them all back, in listening to that other voice, taking that other point of view, letting that other larger, stronger, quieter life come flowing in, and so on all day, so that the Christian life is trying, is striving to hear our good shepherd's voice all the time. And it's hard to do that in a world which is a den of noise. A super interesting quote there at the end. Yeah. Um, do you guys agree that's yeah. the most important line here? That was, I, I, that was I, lobbying. You got, got me to put my head down uh, into the scripture. <laughs> I saw you underline one. a different I, verse. I, I did underline a different verse. I don't know. Elizabeth, what do you have to, what do you have to say of Justin's? I have to agree with Justin. Oh, man. Both, oh, both yes. feed so. in on that one. Wow. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even attempt a Greek translation. You heard it here. Elizabeth and Justin agreed, and Peter's like, uh, he's looking for another one. He's no, no. Looking, he's I, looking. I, I had another one. This is because we're not in the Greek. I don't have any opinions about Greek. So um, I, I'll just comment on the on the on the <clears throat> on the pencil dropper uh, question here. Uh, there's no doubt that the previous the 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 previous portions of the passage might lead. Mm-hmm to that conclusion where um, the, the sheep pen, where all the sheep go in and then the shepherd comes, mm. calls out. I mean, it's pretty cool that you can have five yeah. different sheep of five different shepherds and yeah. each, each shepherd comes and calls and yeah. then the, those sheep come. So that might That's lead true. to that. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I, I can't help, and just because um, I just going to disagree. Uh, but anyway, um, not 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 wildly and vociferously. But I, I say I think the most important line is, uh, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. Uh, and I pick that out because um, the, the gospel of John wow, wow, wow. is the gospel of life, and uh, and that uh, he that that's uh, uh, what the kernel is about. The conclusions keep coming back to hmm. to this question of who is Jesus. And uh, and you get into the book of signs and, mm-hmm. and and all that. So who is Jesus? And if you believe, which means if you participate in the life of Jesus, you get life. That's the kind mm. of transaction. Mm. It's who is this? Who is this guy? What's the godly thing? Yeah. If you participate in 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 the swirl of his divinity, you get this gift of life. And so that's that's why I might I might do that pick out that line Mm -hmm. and uh and so we've been talking about predestination which i has i have nothing to say about that as any (laughs) that that means anything to anybody um but uh this question of it was intended to be good news but it was bad news and so and that they they will never perish i would say i mean we're all pastors of people Mm -hmm. uh seek to see defeat people with with the love of jesus and I mean, you know, at some level, I mean, look what you did yesterday, Justin. You visited a, 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 a person and a couple, and in the worst of heart of circumstances, and part of it is mm-hmm. the message is you will never perish. You're not going to perish. That's that's the central oh, wow. gospel message: is that we have mm-hmm. life and we are not going to perish, mm-hmm. no matter how bad it is. And so that's the one way mm-hmm. I might come back that say that sentence is. More, more, it got more zippity zap than uh, mm. than they hear my voice, mm-hmm. but but a, a good oh, point wow. can be made for they hear my voice too. Yeah. Well, yeah. you just tugged on my heartstrings. I'll change my vote there. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Elizabeth. Uh-oh. No, I, I, I like this the the big picture. I don't think we need to find it an important passage and important 
Jesus is the important part here, and everything he says is important. <laughs> nice. You know, and she I find out to me here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you guys are playing this game where you try, you know, yeah, no, no, no. Right, right, Jesus right. is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus who invited, oh, that's, who that's invited actually, her anyway? I mean, in yeah. the Gospel of John, that's especially true, though, yeah. right? right? Well, you know, we people love to proof text, and that's not what we're doing here. But I think, I think we, when you want to pick out a sentence and, and let it stand alone, mm. um, it's hard to... and. We're not doing that, but I think it's important not to do that, you know, that we have to look at the whole story. And that's why this lectionary is frustrating. Mm. Um, it's where our calendar's driving the lectionary. You know, we got to plug the whole for uh, Shepherding Sunday or whatever it's called. Mm. Good Shepherd Sunday. And that's just a made up Sunday. So if we had a year where we got the whole story... <laughs> That would be really nice. Uh, okay, so yeah, uh, that is a good take. Uh, may, oh, that is funny. Um, so, how about this one? So, uh, talking about voices. So mm. we we're back. We're up in the portico, mm -hmm. and uh, it's sometimes known as the colonnade. It's sometimes translated as the colonnade, mm -hmm. and the Greek word for that, which I cannot say, has, starts with a sto something or other, and that's where the Stoics get their oh, name oh, because they mm -hmm. also taught cool. under colonnades, although oh. they were in Athens teaching under colonnades. Mm -hmm. And so now we get, which voice are you listening mm. to here? So let's, mm -hmm. let's take this away from, wow. let's take this away from, from the, the, uh, uh, the, the text here for a moment and say there are many voices that seek us out, not just noise. And yeah. I, I'm laughing because I start my mornings with meditation yeah. and, and, and the, the animals arrive very quickly, you know, to <laughs> devour my quiet and uh, mm -hmm. like instantly uh, within the first 30 seconds. But the, the question of which voice, which, which, which teaching under the colonnade mm -hmm. Are we listening no, to? And the Stoics, as you know, I mean, about 10 years ago, yeah. the Stoics made a huge comeback. They were all over Barnes & Noble bookstore. You're right. Uh, remember when the Stoics mm -hmm. became popular? Totally. And, and, and now we have, we have the movement of mindfulness. That's, the, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the, the major teaching of our era right now, as far as I can tell. And yeah, I always remember, right. I was all wound up about prayerfulness. I'm like, well, what, I, mindfulness is fine. And it is a good thing. It's good for my mental health. And you can get into the sacrament of the present moment. But I mean, what about, mm -hmm. what about living your life in mm -hmm. communi communication and communion with the divine? Doesn't have any, something to do. But yeah, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. what, which voice are you listening to? Oh, uh, it might mm -hmm. not be Jesus versus the mm -hmm. Hebrew scriptures. It could be Jesus versus mm -hmm. your Instagram account. Right. Yes. Well, that's one that's reason I, I feel we have to step back from a passage like this and not get too micro into, you know, us and them and yeah. they and, and, and there are a lot of losers in this passage, you know, if you're just going to take it at face value. 100%. And, and I don't think Jesus is at all about that. His whole life was about bringing everybody in. You know, and if, if mm -hmm. it's not good news for everyone, it's just not the good news. Totally. You know, so I, I think that that's, that's an important point that you make. Um, One of my favorite lines of the Gospel of John is um, when Jesus says, if I am lifted up, I will draw all people oh. to myself. Mm -hmm. All when I, there. Yeah. And if I am lifted up there, he's referring to his glorification on the cross in the context of the passage, yeah. right? Uh, which is the, what, the, one of the great paradoxes of the Gospel of John. How can this, how can this awful instrument of torture be a throne? How can mm -hmm. this tragedy be, you know, Jesus' glorification? And there's that sense, there's the universal sense, right? That this is, a, this is a gospel which is actually transcending all of the divisions, even the divisions in which the Johannine community out of which this gospel emerges are enmeshed themselves, right? right? Uh, so that the gospel itself, even though it's trafficking in these, in these polemics, which we see very clearly in this mm -hmm. passage and in others, it's also subverting its own polemic right. at oh, the same time. Oh, other yeah. elements of it, the universal like elements here like are, are subverting its own, um, its mm -hmm. own divisions. Just one, one like thing that. that I want to... Um, I know we're, uh, we're coming close to the end of our time, but I do, I want to back us up for just one moment to one of my favorite lines of the Good Shepherd Discourse, which is from uh, just uh, a little bit earlier in chapter 10, verses 14 through 16. So those are, um, I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. Mm -hmm. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's, um, that's, that's again, that's, 
Jesus in the Gospel of John subverting the very divisions whose polemic the Gospel of John is participating in. Because mm-hmm. uh, there's always going to be right. another fold, right? And so the other fold here, perhaps it's the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. Or perhaps it's another group for the Jehani community. But there's also there's another fold for all of us, too. There's always going to be another fold. Mm-hmm. And Jesus, I think, is always saying, I've got sheep in that other fold, too. Mm-hmm. And they listen to my voice. Yeah. Uh, they're not just chasing Instagram or, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I wonder, what, what do you all make of that passage? That was... I, I make a lot of that passage, and I think mm-hmm. about that passage all the time. And I, my Easter sermon was already 12 and a half hours, so I kind of <laughs> cut that out a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I, that very important for me. We have many, uh, what I call our Jewish members. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we can, I can count five of them, yeah. um, who, you know, some of them who are listening to us now. I feel, I find that Jesus is the voice for the, for all people, for all time. If he's mm-hmm. not for everybody, he's not for anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, uh, there are, there are constantly, we are surprised by, by the, by the, 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 um, there is just something about Jesus mm. that makes him unique. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that uniqueness, when paused upon, is touching to all people. Mm-hmm. Take away all the polemics, all the stuff we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is something where he, the, he's not like Moses, he's not like Krishna, he's not, he doesn't, not like Buddha, he's, he's not like anybody. And there's something about that guy and what was happening in him and that voice that transcends all of our ridiculous human constructions. Wow. Agreed. Good last word. An excellent last word. May we all hear his voice. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, We so appreciate you helping us to get the word out about this podcast God bless you. Happy Good Shepherd Sunday. And for those of you local to New Canaan, Connecticut, happy Mayfair uh, weekend and also a happy Mother's Day. Bye-bye.